So there we go. Um, topic for today is this guy. Um, Chris was kind enough to provide me with uh, some early versions actually of his solo instrument line. So there's solo violin, solo viola, cello and basses, uh, bass, solo bass. Um, I think the cellos have just been released. Let me check that for a second. There's the viola, the violin. No, that's... <laughs> Let's see. Best service. Chris, I, I don't see the cello right now, but anyway. Um, I think the, the cello is out as well. Um, so we are going to take a look at his solo strings. Um, the bass has not been released yet. I have it here in the violin section. Uh, so without further ado, let's just jump straight in and load this, load this up. Um, I hope everything works as it should. And well, it makes a sound. Great. So what do we have here? Um, I think it is uh, pretty easy to say for me that this is the most extensive sample violin that I ever had my hands on or ex actually it applies to all of the strings. So it's an incredible amount of detail. And yeah, let's just jump straight in. This is what it sounds like when you load it. Having a look at the interface, so this is the basic interface uh, that gives you most information. Note that is played, the articulation that is actually loaded. Mm. We ha will have a look at these control pages later on in more detail. There's a lot to discover here. And before we actually get into composing, I really would like to take the time to, to go through some of the functions that are available with this instrument and um, the first thing that I uh, want to do I want pancake is following <laughs> thanks for that um, first thing that I want to do is have a look at the room settings here so as you can see there is uh, a reverb setting and a body setting. The body setting is pretty much... Uh, let's get rid of the reverb for now. And the body setting is actually uh, there to give a little bit... Yeah, as the name implies, a little bit of body. If you switch that off, this is the raw sound as it was recorded. So that's bone dry and there is a wide range of presets for or different impulses for the body starting with the increase the volume here a, a little bit to actually let you hear that so there's a little room tone might be a little bit too much Bring that down to minus four. Uh, and then you have different uh, early reflection impulses. That's the shortest one, if you switch it off. It's really subtle. And... So, I have bad connection now. I hope you can upload to YouTube later. I hope so too. So... Um, 
21 different body types from 0 0.2 seconds to 1.8. So let's just check out some of these. And obviously the tail increases with the higher value. Up to 1.8. So that's pretty, pretty roomy. Uh, I go with a 0.4. That's fine. Still very, very dry. Uh, we can work on that a little later. Um, let's have a look at the articulation preset page. If you load that up for the first time and haven't worked with any of Chris's uh, libraries before, it might be a little overwhelming at first. So um, pretty much what you can uh, imagine is that everything that you want to do with the library in terms of customization is customizable. So you can pretty much configure anything to your needs. Um, there are the green area down here. These are the articulation key switches. Uh, as you can see here, you have a long list of available articulations. So sustain, sustain vibrato, dynamic expression, long short, etc., etc. I'm pretty sure you're available. Uh, you're able to read, so I don't go through every thing, a single one of these uh, different short articulations and all that good stuff. Um, and once you click on a key switch that corresponds to the ones down here, it actually changes to the preset. Short up to uh, short six is the shortest one. So let's just bring, uh, I think I will, yeah, I will put, uh, there's not much going on here. It's a really an empty project. We don't need the voice of our channel here. Uh, I would just put a limiter into the master to not destroy your speakers. Uh, let's go just with a simple Waves L1 here and just protect the ceiling a little bit. So. We shouldn't jump on top of 0 dB here because these guys are pretty loud, uh, I have to admit. So like with every library, funnily enough, uh, Chris is one of the few developers who gives you an extended range so you can play the violin down to C, I guess. <laughs> If you need that or not, might be a point of discussion, but if you know that the violin ends on G. But I have encountered moments where I actually was wishing for a violin to go down to, to F sharp. So if you need that, it's there. If not, you don't need to work with it. Um, so basic articulations, let's go through them quickly. Uh, accented vibrato. So, then we have flautando. And going further, lyrical vibrato. Funny enough that I'm shaking the hand <laughs> with a vibrato. Uh, it's actually in the sample, so no need to do a custom vibrato there. Sustain vibrato. You can see in the row, 
here there are six dynamic layers. Right now they're controlled by a velocity, so that is the keyboard function here. And it's pretty beefy in the, in the loudest layer. Um, this brings me to one of the next points, uh, the dynamic controls. So as I've mentioned, you can either uh, control it via keyboard velocity or you can use the crossfade mode. And Chris has developed this uh, function or with his team, uh, this function of phase aligned samples. So you don't have any phase, uh, phasing issues uh, while moving the fader. So you can blend seamlessly from So actually, these are no endless samples. Me as a fan of uh, crossfading, so <coughs> I'm more like crossfading than to velocity based uh, volume or dynamics. So uh, I will stick to that later on uh, we'll change these to to crossfade this is um, no uh, vibrato on the sustain just a plain sustain note and you can control vibrato the lfo based vibrato via mod wheel and you can change pretty much everything that is there so down here in the vibrato section you have the speed the eq that affects uh, the node So that way you can uh, kind of custom control the vibrato if you're not happy in a performance with the recorded vibrato. I think it sounds a little bit more natural, obviously, with the recorded legato because it's by the player. Um, nevertheless, um, you have the option to control vibrato via mod wheel. Or you have an auto vibrato down here at the vibrato page. You can see what that does. So you just hold down the note. And you can obviously do custom shapes for the speed, for example. So if you want to work with an auto vibrato and you can have a bunch of presets here, that works as well. I uh, don't want to go too much into detail on that because I personally prefer, prefer to work with a recorded vibrato. So if I don't need custom vibrato here, uh, I don't use it. But it's there and you can do quite a lot with it. So next one, dynamic expression. Long and short. Then we go on with pizzicato. Pretty badass in the louder velocity layers. So. And then again, uh, have this, this before, short notes uh, in six different variations. Uh, these are the longest shorts and they also uh, have the legato functionality. Then 
then you got a short four. Six is the shortest short. I would say that's a classical staccato. Okay, um, we come to that later. In the legato settings, you can say how fast you play to recognize uh, a chord or a double stop, for example. Going on, spiccato one, that's the longest spiccato. legato for that. Don't need legato there. Ah, okay. Gotta switch to polyphonic. The spiccato 6 is the ultra shortest. It's more a noise than an actual tone. There's the F sharp again <laughs> that the violin actually doesn't have. Um, and obviously, uh, I didn't mention that you can change all the key switches to whatever articulation you like. So, for example, if I say the spiccato 4 is too long, I want a shorter one, then I switch it to 5. Still, I can activate the short legato. Pretty nice. Uh, then we got minor trills, major trills. Flagellé, a very mean ponticello. Repetitions. Um, one thing to notice here, um, they are speed controllable, 100% uh, translates to 100 BPM, so that's pretty easy. If you get something in 120 BPM, you just move the slider. Unfortunately, you can't double click, uh, so when you press down shift and move the slider, it gets a little bit smoother, so you might be able to nail the exact spot. Uh, okay, that's 120.1. Maybe it will be a future update to actually double click and enter the note value manually. You can bring that up to 200. Unfortunately, this only works um, so the speed control only works in keyboard mode when you switch that to crossfade it is gone so you can't do that in crossfade mode but for that patch it's not too bad so it's not that um, uh, it's not that bad uh, so if you need to speed control the repetitions, be aware that you need to have them in keyboard mode. 
Um, since I ran out of key switches here, we listen to some other articulations from the list. Colenio. This is that. Then we had all these. Slide up. What's that? <laughs> That's nice. Maybe the speed control as well. Yeah, you can speed control the slides too. Uh, you get a bunch of effects. So if you need that, and we haven't had a look at Ponticello Tremolo. Next horror score can come. Ponticello Tremolo Crescendo. I'm pretty sure you can tempo sync these as well. Exactly. So you can alter the time of these. Flagellate uh, shorts. Are these speed control as well? Oh, yeah. Okay. Pretty much everything is speed controllable. That's nice. And last but not least, we didn't have a listen to. Where is it? Tremolo. Where is Tremolo? Don't see it. There is tremolo in there. There it is. So also speed controllable. Keep in mind if you want to use the crossfade instrument, you lose the speed control functionality. gets pretty beefy in the loud areas as well. So, so far for the articulations. Um, and this pretty much applies to all the other instruments. So for the viola and the cello, it's pretty much the same. For the cellos, actually the library has two cellos, modern and romantic. We get to these in a minute. Let me just name this here, violin. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. What I want to do is actually set all the long instruments to crossfade. As I've mentioned before, I like it more when they are crossfade patches. So, Pizzicato is short. Let's actually change this here to short three, this one to short five, and this one to short six. So, um, Spicata 1, let's do, go with Spicata 3 here. I think I don't need the ricochet. Let's go with Tremolo there. Die. That's fine. Maybe rather take Colenio. Tremolo, we have that already. So let's uh, actually let's put the flotando up here. So then, what I didn't mention yet, there are the area of these uh, one, two, three, four, five, six keys that are in red down here. These are actually trigger keys, and they have several functionalities. And you can also set these uh, up to whatever you want to use there. So these are the actions you can trigger. Uh, repeat last note, vibrato up, vibrato down, play repetition, trills, uh, tremolo, ponticello tremolo, fall, doit, slide up and slide down. Um, I keep them as they are originally programmed. So for example, if we switch to sustain vibrato, uh, 
you can repeat the note, so kind of a rebow. The same applies for, for example, for the spiccato patches. You can uh, kind of use both hands to play lines. So alternating between the hands. And it also repeats two notes at the same time when you play two notes. Then you can switch, uh, that works great with a uh, vibrato patch, for example. You can trigger a trill. So just with the trigger key, you can have some pretty nice performances there. fall if you do some disco stuff actually let's change the fall to a minor trill so that way you can So you can actually do some pretty nice things uh, while playing live without the need for additional key switches or stuff like that. You can just use the trigger keys. That's pretty cool for playing things live. Um, let's take a closer look at the other section. So as I've mentioned before, we have the crossfade section here. Uh, or you can have... So let's put them... Trills to crossfade, Flageolet to crossfade, Ponticello crossfade. Just that I have the long articulations all on crossfade instead of Flotando crossfade. I think that's it. So, um, yeah, the dynamic section. Uh, there is another mode, uh, keyboard in crossfade, where it kind of the fader picks up the velocity that you play with. Um, An auto crossfade is the same as with the vibrato, you can draw a curve. Um, I personally prefer the crossfade patch. We're good. Um, up here you can set the volume per articulation so everything can be set up for each single key switch so for example when you say the um, pleasure lace are too loud in comparison with the rest you can just put them down by 7 db or something in comparison to the So that's controllable there. Uh, transient, obviously, is a transient designer. If you want to uh, add more oomph to the attack, you can do that there. Um, next thing is the legato. Let's talk a little bit more about that because there's something to be aware of. Um, the normal legato when I do nothing else but play the instrument. Overlapping. The legato works that way that you even can play trills. If you hold down a note and just uh, keep it down, 
keep it pressed and then do, for example, press the C and then you just trigger the D. So you can do manual trills as well. It starts to sound weird after uh, a major third, so up to a minor third. So, um, this is the legato in the edit bar. So it's a mixture of artificial legato and true legato. You can raise the volume of the legato transitions if you want to hear more of these. And just do it over the top. happens if we switch off the artificial legato um, actually I don't want to do too much to it um, back you can control the legato speed if you bring that down legato transition gets longer Thing. if you do it too much you can get close to a, mm, to a, a portamento so let's keep that at 100 by the way strong and click or I think command and click on Mac brings back to the original uh, brings it back to the original value and you can increase it if you need faster uh, transitions <laughs> So, um, then there is the long legato. And this is actually, yeah, portamento. It's triggered with uh, sustain pedal down up to an octave. And if I press the pedal down, and obviously you can control the tempo as well the portamento speed, the glide speed. And, and this is a new feature in the new Violins 1.1 1 .1, uh, that just came out. Uh, you can offset the portamento up to the fact that you can just do race notes, for example. So, and all these controllers obviously are automatable, so you can draw curve after curve in your sequencer if you want to. Let's shorten that a little bit. So <clears throat> if you combine these things like uh, having the sustain pedal for portamento and the trigger keys for repeated notes and I stick with one volume here. Uh, <laughs> so 
So you can do really, really a lot of stuff uh, on the fly uh, without getting too much into key switching and actually changing the articulation. So you can do a lot of stuff uh, with one hand pretty much, or two hands, to be honest. And um, last but not least, there is another thing, which is the glide mode. You can't have uh, the porta legato long, that's portamento. You can't have the portamento or the glide mode at the same time. It would sound ugly. What you can do is actually, um, let's, since I have the floor tunnel two times, I copy this preset, put it down here and paste it. And now I change to glide mode when I press the sustain parallel. So now I have on C0, I have the portamento and on uh, what is it? B flat minus one. The glide mode is a fun thing. You can do a lot of stuff with it. You can change the stem, uh, the tempo, obviously. You can have it major or minor or chromatic. Let's do major and you can either define the key or say I want to start with a start note key so, and you can even define the target note. So if that means if I play a C and go up to a C then it will play in major scale. can do pretty crazy stuff with it. You can do um, if you put that into ensemble mode down here, you can do pretty convincible runs with it. Um, and you can change the uh, target articulation. So that's pretty neat as well. Uh, if I say I just don't want to do 12 steps, I want to do seven steps, for example. And you can say I want to end on a spiccato note. That's way too short to actually realize it. So let's take a long short note. Somehow this does not work. Anyway, principle under, oh, there is the legato on. Let's try it again. Hmm, it doesn't play the note, so maybe there's something wrong there. We'll ask Chris about it. But who wants to end on a short note after a run anyway? So, um, that's for the um, glide mode. Another option down here is um, the blending. You can activate that. So for example, let's say uh, I activate this guy on 94. Let's put this to 111 because that's one of the controllers I have set up here at the moment. No, no, 110, 111. So what you can do is you can blend into different articulations if you want that. I mean, obviously you have the trigger keys. I think these work even better than the blend mode, but they work. What you have to keep in mind is if you activate all of these, um, these are always played uh, when you play note. You see that in the note count up here, because when you want to blend,
it's nice to have the option, but it takes resources. So it six notes when you play one, and triple the amount of notes at the same time when you activate these. They are there, you can use these. I don't need them for now, so I keep them off. Uh, I did a short glimpse on this. There is an ensemble button down here where you can fake a section size. Sounds a bit weird on its own, works in context, but we are talking about solo strings, so I don't need to do multiple players here right now. And the last thing that I want to talk about, and this is something very, very unique to uh, Chris Hein libraries, uh, this is the note head function. And I think before trying to explain what that actually is in <clears throat> detail, let's uh, see that in a in an example to actually know what we're talking so let's go with the 16th run here i'm going to a little bit more volume so that might rather be a triplet run. So this is the sustained vibrato articulation with no overlap. So actually let's increase the tempo a little bit here. Say 144. <clears throat> So, first thing that you could do is do a legato line with that. Sounds way better, but what I am talking about is this little function here, note head. So what does it do? It sits uh, on controller number two initially. You can change everything to every controller you want, but uh, so this is on two. And what happens is, when I move controller 2, you see that it jumps through all the different short articulations that are available. And these are either uh, in front of the sustained note or stacked. Uh, initially, it's set on stacked, and I keep it on stacked. And let's draw a little curve here with controller number 2. Uh, maybe I can put this guy somewhere on the side here that you actually see that it's um, changing the values there for the for the short notes and what it does is it actually overlays the run with different short articulations And for the last note, we can get a little softer and we can also increase the volume. These are uh, velocity sensitive. And that's pretty rad. So I personally haven't heard anything like that in any other sample library. So these runs are mind blowing in my opinion uh, because you get so much variation and it's uh, just, uh, you can, Obviously, you can choose which one you want to have, uh, which overlay you want to have at a specific position. Uh, for example, that was the shortest note there. I don't like that. And the first one can be a little louder. And what you also can do is you can change for example, only you have that accent only on the first note. If you, if you, for example, put the middle two notes to, uh, no, actually the first three notes into legato mode, this is what happens. So you can uh, differentiate between an accented note and 
a legato transition, which is pretty, pretty cool. So right now, every f uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, every first note is accented with, uh, with a note hit by chance the draw drew in here. So actually you're here where the legato uh, is missing. I want a different short articulation on top of that one. And if I do legato here, then we are missing that initial attack note. That still works. So that's, in my opinion, pretty, pretty cool. Uh, so far for the note head, this is what it does, and I think we will make use of that a little later. Um, let's... Now... So... I will rename that to crossfade, so I don't need to do that every little time. I think I deleted the dot. So now we're good. Okay, solo violin crossfade. Um, okay, we had it bone dry all the time, so let's change that. Uh, we'll name that violin. Add track. Effects channel. Uh, okay, I'll be honest with you. I tried a bunch of different effects for the solo violins, especially when you want to kind of create a chamber sound. Um, I didn't go too far with it, but I recently rediscovered that I had a plugin called E Reverb. It's pretty cool, I have to admit. So that's still version one. There is version two available, but anyway. Uh, so let's go with a large hall. Oh, well, not so large. Let's go with this guy. Uh, we keep everything else as is. And then we're going to send the violin to the reverb. with an amount of, say, minus 10 to start with. Let's see how that sounds. That's a nice reverb, I like that. So let's duplicate that solo viola. And I did a little bit more extensively on the violin, but the cool thing is the viola is all the same in terms of interface and stuff like that. So we're going to the room, switch that off. Take a little bit shorter body here, minus 3.6, that's fine. Um, I'm going to switch these to crossfade for a little moment. change this to short three, short five, and short six, and staccato four, staccato five, and staccato six. Ah, 
speak out of six, sorry. Speak out of four, speak out of five. True minor to crossfade, major to crossfade, flagellate to crossfade, modulator to crossfade. Tuska, good evening. Good evening. Nice to have you here. So, uh, we haven't talked about the settings page. There are some more. Uh, there's some more stuff that you can set up. Um, Dynamics, uh, fader style, release effects, and stuff like that. Pitch bend, how it reacts. Uh, round robin actually is fake round robin with borrowing from neighboring zones. I keep that off for now. Um, what is pretty cool is the Sardina function. I mean, it's just a plain filter. So that's the viola as it sounds out of the box. And Sardino sounds like that. Obviously, we need to shape the legato a little bit. And obviously, you can uh, adjust the timing of the por portamento to your song tempo. something wrong sounds like it's in half tone up the major 12 Okay, might be a bug, so that might be need to be fixed. <laughs> very, very nice. So let's get rid of the Sordino here. So then you got a bunch of effects if you want to use the contact internal ones. And last but not least, vibrato page, we have been there, been there, done that. So let's have all the samples loaded. Okay, that's the solo viola. Let's duplicate that. So, and that's the solo cello. And as I've mentioned before, there are actually two cellos in. First of all, let's save this project. So, cello, there is the modern cello and the romantic cello. Just give a listen to the 
modern one for a moment. Takes very long. <laughs> Okay, let's switch over room here. And bring that to crossfade. So that's the modern cello and then you have the romantic cello. Let's load up this. Just got there, what did I miss? A lot, a lot. So sorry for that, but um, that's lost forever. Nothing you can do about it, sorry about that. Crossfade. Let's do the same again here for a second and save that as Crossfade Instruments. Forgive me, I could have done that before the stream, but actually I wanted to have it as as a live experience, and I mean pretty much it is a live experience. Although I had the time um, to check out the library beforehand a little bit. So, I mean, there's obviously so much you can do with it. It's definitely helpful to have a little bit of a play around beforehand. Okay, let's do a major trill here. That's pretty cool. I like that function. Uh, another thing that we're going to do is uh, set it up a little bit like a string ensemble. Uh, even a little bit more to the right and the viola a little bit there. Uh, you may ask... You may ask... Um, wait! String quartet, emulate, there's something missing. Exactly. So there's a solo violin, a solo viola, a solo cello, but no violin too. And there is a little workaround. So we're going to duplicate the violin, make it solo violin too. So we have all the same settings, bring it a little bit more to the center. And what we can do, and this is a little bit of a hassle, uh, because uh, it's the tuning trick. So tuning the whole contact two steps up and bring the MIDI keyboard, for example, two steps down. So to, to make use of another sample set. If I do that, I change all the key switches as well, which I don't want. And actually, Chris told me uh, this morning uh, another way to do it, so you could bring this two steps down, the master tune, and in each articulation can bring that two steps up. So unfortunately we have to go through that 
quickly and do that for every articulation. Maybe in a future update there will be just a button that enables this function. But that way you definitely have different samples playing for violin 1 and 2. And the second thing is that you can uh, obviously EQ them differently a little bit to make up for the sonic differences between violin 1 and 2. So once we are done with this, two up, two up, two up, and then we're good. So tremolo. This all implies that I will make use of all these articulations for whatever we are going to do afterwards. So. Ha! Huh, I just found a bug. The... The repeat key does not repeat the... Okay, there's something that we... Uh, I will get in touch with Chris about that. Uh, the repeat key doesn't change the tune. Actually, <laughs> you can do a trill with it, funny enough. Um, so. This is something I did not realize before, but nevertheless. So we have violin one and violin two. What exactly is the purpose of the tuning trick? Okay, I can show it to you. The thing is, when you, when I just duplicate the instrument, uh, therefore we need to go into uh, the sample groups. So this is violin one. Let's stick with the C. If I open up violin 2, so you can actually see that when I activate both, that with that tuning trick, we are using different samples. So this is in the fourth row here, and this is in the third. If you had both at the same sample, you would get phasing issues because it's playing back the same trumple, sample twice, for example, when you have both violins uh, playing the same note. And that way, with a tuning trick, you can uh, push that a little bit apart so that they use different samples for the same note. Um, so we have the solo viola, solo cello. Actually, what I want to do here, because it's an AVA instrument, so it's one octave higher than it's sounding. And I had that before, that it gives me headache in the roll view. I bring that down an octave and bring the cello up an octave. This obviously messes up the key switches. No, that was not intended to happen. What happened? Thank you. 
That's strange. I had that before in another project. Anyway, okay, let's stick with it for now. Well, libraries do have round robin. Um, they have uh, neighboring round robin, so you can activate round robin. Let's get rid of this. In the settings, you can activate round robin. But actually, I personally think you don't really need it. And for the short articulations... So, back to the articulation presets. So, um, there are a lot of great uh, demos already out there that show the library in kind of a more classical context, I would say. So, um, what I want to do is actually just show you one of these demos in case you haven't seen them. We'll be back in a minute. So far for the demo, pretty amazing in my opinion. So that's crazy what I can do with it. Um, since there are a lot of yeah classical demos and stuff like that, my idea for today was to push it to another limit and to try out how it actually works in um, uh, in a yeah kind of subtle context so i really want to see how they behave in a more uh, accompaniment um so uh basic quartet string section and a piano for example so i will just duplicate that make that a piano so we start with that and then let's see what we can do with it. First of all, where are my pianos? There. Uh, let's go with a gentleman. And I have a nice little preset for this guy.
Intimate. There we go. <laughs> So, sounding good. Giving that piano a little bit of compression. Da -ba -da -ba -da. Uh, let's go with the MU. Da -ba -da 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 -da. Sounds nice. A little bit more reverb to the piano. that's been floating around in my head for quite a while today so let's see what tempo is that Just a basic idea here. Quantize that guy a little bit. So, so up, 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 up. Hard to keep up with the chat there. Uh, so someone using boom libraries. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm not. <laughs> um, about violin, could you sculpt that sound to more harsh in order to emulate tradition? You, yeah, definitely you can uh, tweak it in various ways and you can bring other, actually I want to take out the harshness a little bit. I personally think that it's, quite on the edge of, of being harsh. Um. But if you, for example, if you just drop on an EQ, you can, uh, EQ, sorry, you can um, have a look at the especially the short articulations I'm not laughing about boom I was <laughs> sorry guys the, don't don't uh, get me wrong there I uh, was not laughing about boom they do great stuff <laughs> but as we are talking about the violence today uh, boom is not obviously the topic that I can cover today so uh, they definitely do great stuff so don't get me wrong there <laughs> So um, back to topic regarding the harshness of the violin or if you can get that uh, fiddle sound. So um, I, for myself, uh, when, when we come to mixing a little bit later, I would definitely bring the harshness a little bit down. Um, 
but you can definitely do uh, do some uh, yeah country filling with that. I think it takes a little bit more amount of programming to get that right. Um, nevertheless, I think it's possible to do. So let's see what we have here. As usual, let's add a chord track for you guys to follow along in case you want to know what we're doing. Uh, we'll add an empty MIDI track named Chords. And this is not connected. And we can get rid of that. And the chord track, we will send that to Chords. Bring that up, make that red, and then let's start with it. So that whole thing is in E flat major. Then we have a G minor. And we have an A flat major seven. <laughs> B major, B flat major. Um, could you maybe show the portamento of the violin? Uh, I did that already, but uh, we will do that later on when we're working with the library. Uh, just as a, you can tweak pretty much uh, how he wants it to sound. So. <laughs> I already configured that to my liking. That's the initial state when you load up the patch. And you can tweak the offset of the portamento and also the length. You can make it longer. And da -ba -da -ba -da. I like it very fast, the portamento. So. So that's the uh, portamento via uh, pedal. So sustain pedal triggers portamento. So then we have... up there in one note. Well, actually not. I think that's intentional. Bring that down a little bit. Okay, so that's the basic chord scheme that we have gone there. I'm going to copy that over. And I want to start first with some basic uh, chords in the strings and I really want to go subtle for a start. Exactly what I need. Pushing a little bit more to the right. Um, so let's start with some basic notes in the cello. Um, Um, 
first of all, let's look for the articulation. I think I'm trying out the flow tundra here to start with. Let's see how that works. Sounds pretty nice. So let's. Uh, this is B flat minus one. So let's actually trigger the right articulation here for the cello. Uh, regarding cello positioning, do you ever do stereo positioning by using minor left right delay, or do you stick to left right panning? Letter, so I stick to left right panning pretty much. Um, Fiola, so let's go with Plot Tundra as well. Let's have a look at the body again. Just increasing the reverb a little bit here on the strings. Let's push that a little bit up. Can never have enough reverb, can't you? So, okay. Good. So what are we going to do with a uh, viola? We are in E flat major. Let's start with the cello on. have put me on your TV. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> Enjoy the program. <laughs> so uh, let's try out something. Uh... Far for the solo violin. That's indeed the real Chris Hein there. Hey Chris, you made it. Glad to see you around.
So actually, let's put the volume of the flotando a little bit down. That's a little bit loud compared to the rest. And also bring that volume a little bit more down. already too much there going on in the modulation or in the, in the velocity curve so I'll bring that down a tad I really want to try out the subtle side of the library. I love the included vibrato. an octave down. Okay, so there the viola goes below the cello, but I think it doesn't matter. Let's go that route. Do they have Flotando only or also Consordino? Uh, there are no actual Consordino recordings. There is uh, a Consordino switch in the interface that you can automate as well. So in the settings, uh, you can put on Sardino and besides that there's a lot of long articulations, flotando, um, harmonics and uh, no vibrato and vibrato sustains and lyrical vibrato and stuff like that. We will come to that uh, in the course of the stream. <laughs> So, and then we have violin one and violin two, and let's see if we can actually do something with the maximum vibrato, sustain vibrato. Oh, I copied the sustain vibrato for the glide mode just to show that off. Um, actually, let's switch this to flageolet. Or do I have flageolet up here? Got flageolet already there. Let's 
really want that subtle, fragile tone there in, in the violin. Okay, the pitch is a little bit drifting at the end of the note. Oh, not <laughs> actually that that uh, harm flageolet there sounds more like a harmonica. Okay, let's go with a, a standard sustain or with uh, Flotando as well. Okay, I need a little bit more long. A little bit faster. Let's see how that sounds. <laughs> okay, <laughs> the intro was nice. Um, is there a way to link vibrato to mod wheel? Vibrato is already linked to mod wheel. So you have two options. You have the sustained vibrato, which is a recorded vibrato. Or you can use the um, sustain without vibrato. And you can do that LFO vibrato and you can change the speed. You can change the speed while playing. Uh, let me... So, um, definitely ModWare is linked to vibrato and you have... Um, pretty great options to uh, work with the vibrato. Um, I would suggest as long as you can live with the uh, integrated vibrato sounds, like this one or the lyrical legato or ly lyrical vibrato, So there's a lot of stuff already in there, but if you need a certain personal vibrato or whatever, or heavier, more intense vibrato, uh, you can always use the sustain articulation. And you can even change the EQ setting, so how much it is affecting the note. <laughs> to a really uh, one thing I forgot to mention what's also in there and this is also pretty cool I mentioned the trigger keys down here the last trigger key up here which is uh, the B is set up to be brought up so you can hold a note And via the vibrato key, you can play your own vibrato without the mod wheel. So that's another way to do it. And this actually can, how do I put it, intensify the recorded vibrato. So when you, for example, play a line.
so you can really bring it to extreme with that uh, trigger key and you can also uh, alter the volume and how much it affects so you can have it more subtle or even more intense depending on the way you, you want to have it um, for example if we go back to the articulation window uh, I didn't even record a violin yet <laughs> okay let's do something with it Just trying out the the portamento there obviously uh i would need to adjust the portamento slight time uh depending on how i want to have it i don't want to overuse it have to be honest there as well um So I'm just trying out something here. For example, on that note, there I would do slide down. So I think I will uh, edit that afterwards. Obviously, there was a little bit too much with portamento. And I want to actually try out the uh, manual vibrato. So I want to bring up the, the window here. So that's the trigger key for that is uh, B flat one. Assign a mise to legato offset and speed to get different portamento during the track. <laughs> Chris, that's exactly what I want to do right now. But I didn't want to do it while live playing. I wanted to do the afterwards in MIDI editing. So I will s trigger uh, or, or adjust the, the portamento times uh, with a MIDI CC. Exactly what I want to do. So it's a little bit too much for my taste, the vibrato up. So let's bring that tune. Uh, I have the feeling the harder you hit the key, the more it reacts. So you can do subtle or bold. So when I record that, actually, just want to try it out. So this is kind of custom um, vibrato. And let's uh, take a look at the offset. Offset is not learned yet, so I will put that to... I hope it's not taken yet. Let's learn 83. 
Okay. So we're going with eighty three. So now I can control the portamento offset. You can see that here uh, with the MIDI controller. So, for example, I want to have a longer vibrato here, uh, portamento here. So, where is my sustain? There's my sustain. So that's a little bit too much, so I go further into the transition. And also I want to have it not that loud. Actually, I had a transition here. So that sounds pretty cool. Hi, Dirk, please tell me how do you keep all these libraries used? I think meanwhile, I'm on a two and a half terabytes of SSD drives. Okay, you can't really push it to extreme, but um, if we do it subtle. So, yeah. Why is there no... Ah, I want to go to sustain. Actually, there should be. Uh, let's try to re trigger that. Actually, that sh since I play the sustain pedal there. Something went wrong here with the long legato. That, okay, Chris told me uh, if you use a controller that has another function, it might mess up the instrument. So I uh, I put. CC83 onto this controller, I think that might have been a bad idea. So uh, let's, I think in the manual there is uh, an overview which controllers are actually free and available. So um, I'm going to reload the instrument and need to, let's take a look at the manual. RTFM, <laughs> always the same, uh, 23, MIDI CC list. I mean, Chris, if you're still watching, uh, if you have an idea why 83 messes this thing up, 
or just tell me which controller I can use for the offset. Or maybe it is already here. Truly got a long, long volume speed offset. 57. Okay, there we go. 57 is pre-set up for this guy. So then we need setup. We can get rid of 83. We don't need that. And we put 57 in there. So sorry for that. This is a lot of nerd talk right now. <laughs> um, sometimes it has to be. Okay, it doesn't work. Let's put it like that. The top of the page, I can see I already closed that. Anyway, I mean, it's working now. So 57 is for the offset. But the... the and there is an overlay still active. I wondered why the initial node is... Uh, The MIDI CC instrument has all pre-programmed CCs. The one you use doesn't have pre-programmed controls. Ah, okay, so it doesn't change anything if I use this one. Ha, okay, got it. So uh, I need to assign 57. Oh, I don't have a controller 57 right now, so I go to automation. Uh, host parameter. Media automation. So CC57 goes to offset. There we go. Now we should see a change. Yeah, now it's working. Good. Uh, what I wanted to say is I wondered why the initial note has that heart attack. Uh, <laughs> heart attack. <laughs> uh, the note head function is still active, so I need to reinitialize that. Uh, so I go to controller 2 and put it on 0, so now we have the note heads off. And now we have no attack there. So a little bit more transition, please. Nevertheless, we have no transition there. Oh, it seems to work. Anyway, uh, any word on the note head function? Uh, somebody Sam, uh, we did that before, but no problem. We can show it again, what that actually is. Uh, imagine we have the sustain vibrato instrument loaded on the violin and we do a run. Let's do a 16th run here. So, um, bring the volume a little bit up. So this is all notes with the same length, no legato. Okay, let's do the last one. It's long note. And bring the volume up a little bit. That you can hear it. So this is uh, no legato and a run function. First thing that it could do is actually trigger legato. which sounds pretty rad already. And what you can do with the note head function on controller 2 is when I move controller 2, you can see 
that it switches through all the short articulations that are available. So there are 12 overall and you can either stack them or put them before the sustained note. Uh, I keep it on stack because I like it more. Uh, what that does is um, that it um, overlays short note articulations over the long note articulations. And what that actually does is, just for the comparison, this is without note head. And this is with note head. And please see that I do randomly. So I don't say I want spiccato three, four, five, or whatever on this position, uh, but just draw random events and watch what happens here in the note overhead, oh, uh, note head overlay. So this is pretty rad. And uh, what you can do as well is, for example, just trigger on the first note of the of the run, the short notes. When you do the other notes as legato, the note head will not be triggered. So if you do that legato, and for example, now I feel that this guy here, which one is it? This note is a little bit harsh. So I take that down a little bit or use another note head. Well, that's pretty cool. When you compare that to no note head, with note head. Um, I think that's pretty great. So this is actually the note head function. Something I haven't seen in any other library so far. Uh, pretty great way to bring realism to, to run th uh, runs and things like that. Uh, back to topic. <laughs> There was something wrong. Obviously, we need a little bit faster transition there for the portamento. to get rid of that when we release the note so sustain pedal okay we have that already and here let's add a little bit more vibrato Adjusting the volume curve a little bit, want to have it rising there. doesn't fit there but we can re-trigger the note rebo that was a little bit too much so we bring 
and down the bottom. I think I will tweak that manual uh, vibrato a little bit more. So that's still too much. Bring that down a little bit. I think it's the tune that affects the amount of vibrato. <laughs> Not sure why the re-trigger function for the note drops in that hard. I think that way works. Okay, um, last but not least, we have a second violin as well. And maybe for this one, we go with uh, Flageolet as well. Okay, I would just add in the high note. And I also want to change the room sample to change the body a little bit to make it more distinctive from violin one and bring down the volume a little bit on this. The harsh rebo is another bug fix soon. Thank you, Chris. That's awesome. You know I'm good at bug finding. <laughs> okay, let's rack up this. the note there but not the way down so I really want to have it subtle let's switch the piano off for a moment and listen to that on its own and I think we can even give it a little bit more uh, reverb here so where do we have the actual size? Oh, the complexity low. Now we go with XXL. So Have to admit that sounds pretty great. 
so uh, let's give that a cycle for a moment to re-listen again and uh, so this is really the subtle 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 side of uh, the strings when you use flagellate and the actually I'm missing one note here let's record that <laughs> We'll stop there and uh, well listen to what we have so far in terms of soft strings and then we uh, kind of change the chords then and uh, enhance and go a little bit more beefy with the strings see where that leads <laughs> So, okay, coming from here. Let's record some piano first. Just an idea that I have here. Eh. <laughs> okay, that last note sucked. Um fingers too short there it needs to be okay we got eight notes quantize them a little bit to taste would be better if I could actually play that one's a little bit harsh So, bring that there. No, that was. There's a note missing. So, and I'm running over with ideas. Let's not strictly keep it to quartet. I want to duplicate all these instruments, but use the ensemble versions or the ensemble emulation. Hmm. 
Ah, there we go. Do this. And so first of all, get rid of this, get rid of this. And then we duplicate the And so let's change that up. And the same setting as the first violin, but now in comparison to Make it two players. The D tune is great there. And the same for the violas. Uh, articulation preset. Two players. That's great. And the cello as well. Double that up so we have two cellos playing. Articulation preset, two cellos. So just to when I when I put the chords underneath. Uh, First of all, let's uh, define what we have here. That's C major uh, minor seven. That's actually in A flat major. Then we're going to E flat again. Nope, to B, then C minor again, A, B. So, uh, time of a secondary dominant, add some spice. Um, well, I changed to the parallel minor that should be enough spice for now. But maybe... And only for the last part, let's not go with a B sus4 but with an F here. And for this an F over A. So we have in the base G A flat A B. So let's change this up here to first of all sustain pedal. That's fine. Solo violin on top. Let's first try if we can play live. Mm -hmm. 
something like that. Uh, we need to uh, record some. So first of all, I want to change that to sustained. record some more expression. the trill there. Now we need to end that a little bit sooner and start a little bit louder. And that would be the perfect time for a slide into that note. And um, we may consider giving it a little bit more time. And yeah, adding a little bit of spice with additional vibrato. The more I use it, the more I start to love that uh, vibrato trigger key. It works pretty, pretty well. So, and what we want to do is um, have... Ah, damn it. First note needs to be on the beat. So, and now we have the ensemble strings here. to see if I can fix that in the arrangement. How much time did you get to spend getting to know the series? It seemed pretty comfy with everything. Um, I had the advantage of having worked with some of Chris libraries before and they are similar in the layout. So that's not too hard to get your head around it. And initially I had just, a f I think, two days or something like that. that I checked uh, the strings beforehand. So it was not too much time. Like the A there. We'll put that from the bass later on. Um, still trying. Uh, 
actually that needs to be longer. And let me try to have that last note as no vibrato and use the mod wheel. to come in with heavy vibrato there and pretty soon drop it off. To want to end on no vibrato there. Uh, viola section. We have the cellos starting on the E flat. Start with the with the notes only from the chord, and then we'll see if we can expand it a little bit. See how it sounds doubled. That wasn't too bad. string sound on their own. No, don't like that. generic. That might be an idea to actually not double the high note in the cello.
What did I play? Damn it. Somehow I like that. I need to tweak a little bit in the end it gets all on the same note so I need to spread that out a little bit more. But overall we're getting there. <laughs> Actually, that G in front is pretty nice. Let's go with the third in the solo cello. to add the same line an octave above. No, not with a single violin, but with a violin ensemble. Okay, maybe go with that one. And for the last cello note there, let's go with the flautando again. We'll start with that one. Okay, bear with me. We're getting there, but I want to listen to that from the beginning. We don't need all the piano intro. <laughs> Last but not least, let's duplicate the solo cello and make that the double bass. Oops. 
Okay. Um, dum -dum -dum -dum. And as I said, that one is not released yet. That's still the better. Um, but it should work overall. So I think we can have the bass with a little bit, I mean, we keep it to the right, give it a little bit less reverb. Let's add that in. Just listen to the ensemble strings here. Sounds nice. Okay, let's go with an ending there. Nothing too fancy, just to give the whole thing an ending. So that's... That's a basic C minor. Then we have G minor. With a B flat in the bass. That's an A flat major seven again. I think that was in G minor seven. Major. 
pieces. P7 and E flat. That's a two minute track there, and now we just need to fill out the chords again with some really lovely, nice harmonies. So I'm going for the subtle sound again. Um, bring these up. And let's start with the cello again. Cello again. <laughs> that was a bad pun. <laughs> Okay. Root notes. Damn it. <laughs> that last bit is a little bit out of tune, so we shorten that. Let's just keep it simple. Okay, maybe a click might help. it now Okay, now we want that sweeping, soaring solo violin on top. First we need the third harmony. I mean, that's parallel uh, movement. We see how that goes.
not entirely happy with that, but let's begin with it. Okay, we tweak that a little bit. This guy gets a portamento. Ah, damn it. Therefore we need sustain pedal. And we need a little bit more information of the portamento, so bring that down a little bit. actually less. And there definitely portamento. And we might adjust the speed as well on this guy. switch to need to find out where the key switch is again okay so yeah I'm finished in a few minutes Okay, last part. Actually, here on this guy.
along. Want to have a butter smooth transition there. Okay, this is better, but why is this guy so odd? volume. Yeah, I think that works. So, um, I actually thought that I need to tweak the cue for the violin a little bit more, but it seems overall that it is pretty straightforward. Nevertheless, I still take out a little bit of the harshness. So I'm going to solo this guy. put on a slight compression on the violin to tame the dynamic jumps a little bit. So let's put on Pro C2. Okay, um, nothing fancy on the meter. I'm just putting uh, a virtual mix rack. Mm -hmm. 